Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ranjita Soni, I am Faculty of Environmental Science, Jagannath University, Jaipur. Today I will discuss about the biomedical waste management. Basically, we can say this uh, category of waste, biomedical, which is basically released from the hospitals and uh, medical institutions and nursing homes. Uh, uh, we can say this uh, term as a health care management also. Basically, uh, biomedical waste is a kind of waste which generate from the uh, diagnosis and treatment of the uh, particular immunizations and human beings and particular for the research activities from the hospitals and uh, medical institutions and nursing home areas. Healthcare waste, as I told you, uh, basically this healthcare waste we can define just as a total waste which include or we can say consist waste uh, basically from uh, some part of general waste and other, another part of health risk care waste. So basically in general uh, waste the uh, amount of waste is around to 75 to 90 percent and health care risk which is highly toxic and contaminated waste is around 10 to 25 percent. Now uh, we can uh, categorize further this healthcare general waste into paper packaging, plastic packaging like uh, if you are using any kind of syringes, bottles, medicines packaging. So all packaging are including in this waste. Food preparations and another items which have been uh, not contaminated. So we can add in this category. Now basically this biomedical waste included or generated hospital, nursing home, clinics, medical laboratories, blood banks and animal houses or slaughter houses also. Now such a waste can also be generated at a home uh, for health care and basically it is uh, discarded uh, from the patient site like injections or dressing material etc. Now these are some basic components which releases in as a biomedical waste. Solids, uh, if you consider in uh, form of solids, they are catheters and tubes, disposable masks and scrubs disposable tools, medical gloves and uh, wound dressings. And if we consider the biomedical waste in liquid category, it may be blood, serums, body fluids, tissues, cell and organ and tissue culture from the operation theatres. Now uh, some sharps also discarded as a bi biomedical waste like blades, scalpels, syringes, needles, then material which is made up of uh, some covets or uh, slides and plastic pipettes and again syringes. Some waste are included in this category uh, which is known as laboratory waste like animal carcasses, hazardous chemicals, medicinal plants or medicines, expired medicines, radioactive material with biological components like x-ray sheets and uh, other uh, contaminated materials, supernatants, then urine, uh, caregivers, fecus material, psychotoxic drugs, all these are included in this category. So these are the basic types of biomedical waste. Now uh, as we know all type of biomedical waste again uh, I am telling you uh, just uh, they are releasing from uh, various types of hospitals, nursing homes, medical laboratories and uh, blood banks etc. So these are the basic sources. But if we talk as per their contamination or as per their hazardousness, so we can categorize or classify this waste into two major categories. One is non-hazardous and other is hazardous. So as I told earlier, uh, hazardous waste are small in quantity, but it is highly toxic and highly harmful. Non-hazardous waste volume is higher, but it, it is not in the condition of toxicity. So it may include basically uh, general waste but when we talk about the hazardous waste it is further categorized into infectious waste and other hazardous waste. So if we talk about the infectious waste they may include non-sharps without needles or syringes or cutters. Some sharps waste then we can include some needles, syringes, scalpels and cutters also. Then plastic disposables, liquid waste those are infectious waste. Then other hazardous category radioactive waste, discarded glasses, containers, pressurized containers, chemical waste, cytotoxic waste, etc. 
Now, uh, basically, we can uh, this category uh, as per their volume. Now, these are the table which shows basically uh, which type of waste basically generate from the source and how we can treat or dispose it. Like, uh, if you see in the first category, human waste like organ, body parts, tissues, if they are generated, so we have to dispose or in. Uh, accordingly treatment we have to incinerate or deep burial matter that means this is a part of disposal and treatment because biomedical waste we cannot dispose directly without any treatment because it is highly hazardous and contaminated waste so that we have to uh, treat before the disposal now again in the second category like animal waste so we have to again incinerate and deep burial deep burial exactly mean uh, the land filling uh, underground uh, basically as per the depth of the land area then uh, third category is microbiology and biotechnology waste so basically it is again a contaminated waste from microbial contamination so we can uh, treat as per the autoclaving and micro uh, microwaving or incinerate incinerate is a burning process high temperature and high pressure burning process then if we are using sharps and are discarded these sharps as a waste so we have to disinfect by the chemical treatment method uh, we can use autoclaving method we can use microwaving method or uh, we can use the uh, basically shredding method which is a part of scr uh, scrutiny then uh, discarded medicines and cytotoxic drugs so basically these kind of waste we can incinerate and uh, drug dispose as secured landfill uh, to stop the water and air pollution control methods. Now contaminated and solid waste, contaminated solids, solid waste we can autoclave, microwave and incinerate again in form of solid waste except sharps that means excluding the sharps we can disinfect it uh, by the chemical treatment, we can use microwaving method, we can use autoclaving and uh, shedding methods. Then eight categories which is uh, relates with the liquid waste, uh, we can just again disinfect it by chemical treatments, use, we can use some chemicals. Then incineration ash, this is again a part of solid waste uh, biomedically. So we have to dispose this uh, ash into municipal land filling. Then chemical waste again after chemical treatment or discharge. Uh, of liquid and secured land filling of uh, these kind of waste we can use the method now uh, after the knowing about which kind of treatment or disposal method we can adopt we, we should know about the disposable of waste like which type of containers we can use for the particular uh, type of waste collections Con uh, basically these are the container types we can see uh, in this picture as per their color coding we can collect the solid uh, biomedical solid or liquid waste as per their color basis like if we are using black color bucket we have to add this uh, uh, in this bag chemical waste now uh, in yellow bag we can just uh, yellow bag or bucket we can add human or anam anatomical waste we can add after uh, the discarding in operation theater we can put all the waste in this bag if you are using blue color then uh, this bag we can use for the solid or sharp for medical waste uh, collection and the red bag we can use for the plastic waste that means we can use this bag for the general purpose disposable waste so as per their color coding we can collect all kind of biomedical waste from the different different sources now uh, these are some disposable procedure as per the collection of individual waste like if you are using urine from the patient if you are using stool or blood or blood serums or carcasses so where we have to put this waste so uh, basically as per their color contaminator, uh, con uh, containers we can put all these kinds of waste as per their disposal methods like if you are using incineration we have to put this bag and uh, direct basically we can collect this waste or uh, direct to, to uh, the incinerator area then sharps 
like uh, here are uh, just showing sharp including needles, scalpels, blades, small pieces of glass. So we have to take guidance and take care autoclaving when bean is full. When uh, bean is full, then we will fill it in the fill. We have to dispose of the plastic to dispose of the plastic, so we will use black bag which will be labeled. Uh, if identifiable, still then positively offensive. If there is a smell, then so orange bag and labeled will be labeled. Here, labeling and uh, decoding, coding is very important for biomedical waste. Glasses के लिए different है coating, medicines के लिए, then कुछ special categories है waste के लिए, जिनको हम pre-notify waste कहते हैं, ये basically toxic waste है, chemical waste और toxic waste है, इनके लिए हम individually color coating करके और इन waste को हम collect करते हैं, now which type of precautions for the collection and treatment of solid uh, biomedical waste, so some precautions we have to follow also, like never fill sec more than three fourth. आपको three fourth से ज़्यादा bucket को नहीं fill करना है. चाहे आपने इसमें shafts fill किए हैं या अदर कोई waste fill किया है. Do not use anything that leaks secure sac with a plastic tie seal means before removing from the lab. Lab से जैसे ही कोई सामान जाएगा तो वो proper pack and seal होना चाहिए. Otherwise उसमें से leakage हो जाएगा और वो contaminated waste होगा तो वो contamination cause करेगा. Always use a barcode label and complete your label record sheet. Record sheet जो है वो proper होना चाहिए, barcode उसपे होना चाहिए ताकि हमें उसे उसका सारा information हम उसपे share कर सकें. And जो special waste है, वो as per the rule, biomedical waste handling rule, उस special waste को हमें handling कैसे करना है, कैसे ले जाना है, कहाँ पे dumping करना है, कैसे dispose करना है. वो प्रोसीजर वो रूल्स जब तक हम फॉलो नहीं करें हम उस वेस्ट को मूव ना करें और ओपन एरिया में ना छोड़ें तो जितने भी ये सारे सेफ्टी प्रिकॉशंस हैं प्रोसीजर्स हैं ये फॉलो करके वी कैन जस्ट पुट द बायोमेडिकल वेस्ट इन अ फॉर्म ऑफ मैनेजमेंट वे थैंक यू